As the highest point in the lower 49 states, Mount Whitney gets a lot of attention. I'm going to describe how to climb Mount Whitney using the so-called dreaded sand hill route. There are at least 14 routes up Mount Whitney, including two maintained non-technical trails, a class three scramble route, and a host of technical rock climbing routes. What makes the dreaded sand hill unique is that it is non-technical, a class two walk up, but without maintained trails, there are not the hordes of people you will find on Whitney Portal or coming up from Guitar Lake. The route does require cross-country travel with relatively easy route finding, but no real fall risk. This is a multi-day backpacking trip coming from the south and most parties will start at Horseshoe Meadows, elevation 10,000 feet. I will describe coming through Mitre Basin. Soldier Lake is the last site of maintained trail before entering Mitre Basin. Leaving Soldier Lake at elevation 10,800, you climb up roughly 500 vertical feet and about six tenths of a mile to enter Mitre Basin. Mitre Basin is a large, beautiful basin drained by Rock Creek and is not often visited. Cross-country travel in Mitre Basin is easy. One only need travel up Rock Creek. At elevation 11,550, Sky Blue Lake is the predominant lake in Mitre Basin. A number of good campsites can be found here at Sky Blue. Sky Blue Lake is roughly 14 miles from the Horseshoe Meadows trailheads. An average party will take two days to arrive at Sky Blue. Sky Blue is a good base camp for a very long day trip up Whitney and back. From Sky Blue Lake, the next objective is Crab Tree Pass at elevation 12,600 another two and a half miles up Mitre Basin. A large visible waterfall coming from one of the upper Mitre Basin lakes will force you to divert west and not up the main drainage as seen. With a good map and following the used trails and cairns, this is not difficult navigation. But as this is cross country travel, expect to make much slower time than you would on maintained trail of similar distance and elevation gain. Reaching Crabtree Pass, the dreaded sand hill is finally visible. The standard route is to descend roughly 500 vertical feet from Crabtree Pass to the uppermost lake in Crabtree Basin before starting to climb the sand hill. It is also possible to move climbers right from Crabtree Pass and contour around the flanks of Mount McKady, attempting not to lose elevation and not descend all the way to the upper Crabtree Lake. This maneuver will save climbing, but may involve some class three scrambling. The overall goal is to travel from the uppermost lake in Crabtree drainage to Discovery Pinnacle, a gain of about 1600 vertical feet and about seven tenths of a mile. You may climb directly up the sand hill or may bear west, which will shorten the sand hill, but have you running along Hitchcock Ridge for some distance. At Discovery Pinnacle, you will find the maintained trail at Trailcrest. The climb up the sand hill is well seen in these photos. Large chunks of granite are intermixed with coarse, deep sand. There is no real fall risk here. It is more a problem of stepping up 12 inches and sliding back six. In the foreground, the sand hill route is clearly seen with the crab tree pass descent route shown in the background. In its western portions, the sand hill is topped by large blocks which fall dramatically to the north into Hitchcock Basin. This view shows two routes up the sand hill, one moving directly to Discovery Pinnacle and the other gaining Hitchcock Ridge and then traveling along the ridge to reach the pinnacle. Once at Discovery Pinnacle and Trail Crest, one simply follows the maintained trail to the summit of Mount Whitney. 
Discovery Pinnacle at elevation 13700 is where you'll join Trail Crest in the Maintain Trail. This is a major landmark along the route. From the junction with Trail Crest, it is an additional two miles one way with 800 more vertical feet of climbing to reach the summit of Mount Whitney. As opposed to the solitude you'll find everywhere between Soldier Lake and Discovery Pinnacle, you will find lots of people once you reach Trail Crest. The red star in this view represents the top of the dreaded sand hill some two miles in the distance. If this is a day trip from Sky Blue Lake, simply come back the way you came. Descending the dreaded sand hill is not difficult even with a full pack. Simply move west and make sure you can see a cliff free route all the way to the lake. The cliff free route is generally at the western end of the uppermost lake in Crabtree Basin. The cliff bands are easy to see and avoid. Once back at the lake, you still need to climb back up the northern aspect of Crabtree Pass. This is roughly 500 vertical feet. Back over Crabtree Pass is downhill all the way to Sky Blue Lake. The total round trip from Sky Blue Lake to the Whitney Summit and back is roughly 13 miles and more than 5,000 vertical feet of climbing with a minimum elevation of 11,500. While in the area, don't forget to do some fishing. We found success using spinners in the lakes and using flies in the creek, such as Rock Creek. Many parts of this trip will take you through golden trout wilderness. It's a pretty fish, isn't it? A trip like this would require a backcountry camping permit cross-country travel permit with a maximum of eight persons and a Mount Whitney zone permit. Even without a trip up Mount Whitney, Mitre Basin is a spectacular location. You can return the way you came past Soldier Lake or also simply follow Rock Creek all the way out the drainage to meet up with the Pacific Crest Trail. No matter how you do it, this is a great route. 